Okay, so every time there's a tough question, I get it. Um, so the question is uh, about the Bible. So you gave one episode. You seem you seem to indicate that there's more than one time that this this happened. I so so uh, besides for David, besides for David, is there anything else specifically? Well, David, it. famous story. David, David and Bathsheba. Bathsheba. <coughs> is there any other stories? I can't recall offhand, but you, well, I would say like Lot when Lot like wanted to give up his, uh, you know. Well, Waters to the stranger, which I thought was a little odd. You know, I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, abuse of women that goes on. I'd say, you know, I mean, I would. I'm just. Oh, is any? Well, okay, so that. so we so we have David. We have we have Lot. The story of Lot. Is there any other any other? Cain, We're looking. I, I, think, I think there's also a more. Um, you mentioned specifically the story of David. I think the story of Lot is also um, is also another specific example. But I think this could be expanded to. Um, people doing bad things, right? So how how do we how do we today um, look back or understand stories from the Bible or from the Torah where people did bad things or people seem like they committed adultery or people seem like uh, they made a foolish decision to um, you know give up your daughters, right? That was the example you gave, right? You give up your daughters uh, in order to save the guests. Seems uh, odd, strange, peculiar, and wrong. Is that the question? Yeah. Do you think of any more examples of this phenomenon? Phenomena? Cain killing his brother. Oh, Cain. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, that's good. We have three examples. Any anything else? What Esther did was that right? Esther. It's another good good question. Esther seemed like she went. She was. She may have been a married woman. That's a dispute. But if she was a married woman, how would she go? Uh, how would she go and sleep with uh, Ahasuerus? Right, it's upcoming. It's in a week and a half with a story of Purim. Um, Esther went and slept with Ahasuerus. Uh, he, you know, he a he's not Jewish, right? B, it's she's maybe married. C, it's promiscuous. It's wrong, yeah. right? Another good example of a, of a story of to understand. So I think that we'll we'll have to address this from a few different angles. Um, point number one, uh, Dave mentioned is that uh, some of these episodes are before the Torah. Before the Torah, remember, the Torah gave us a list of rules. Before the Torah, we don't really have. We have the seven Noahide laws that they were incorporated right before the Torah. That's why they're universal. They're not specific to the Jewish people. But a lot of these things, a lot of infractions were given before, um, before the Torah. Um, but that, that's point number one. But, but, but more specifically, um, it's also important to recognize that some people made mistakes. Not everyone, not everyone did everything correctly, and Cain uh, committed uh, uh, frat, fratricide or fratricide. We killed his own brother, and he was wronged, and he was banished. Right? That's what it says. He was banished. He was sent away. It means God did not find favor. He made a mistake. Right? So yeah, how do we understand that? He made a mistake. Don't make the same mistake. Don't kill your brother. Don't do things which are wrong. Right? So not everyone is judged favorably. Problem is, is that Esther is tremendously praised for what she did. And David, clearly, in classical Jewish literature, is viewed in a positive way, overwhelmingly positive. Now, we know that David did, did repent. And uh, there's lots and lots and lots of uh, uh, parts of Psalms, which you know Psalms was authored by King David, where it's, it's in repentance. And the Talmud tells us many times that David was repentant. But, the question that you bring up, this is just for, for anecdotal, anecdotally, uh, very interesting. You brought up, it's been brought up over the years, and even at the time of David, there were people, the Talmud tells a story in, in two places in the Talmud. Uh, Talmud says that people came over to David and would ask him questions. David was the king, right? He was the king and the greatest Torah scholar. And people tell, come over to him and say, uh, uh, I have a question. Tell me, what, what happens to someone who commits adultery? And they would try to poke fun at him, right? Uh, David, tell you a halacha query. Uh, tell me, someone who commits adultery, which one of the four capital puni- punishments does he get? Do you know what David answered? Amazing, amazing answer. The best answer you'll ever see. David said to him, you're asking me, you're asking me, which one of the capital punishments does someone who commits adultery get? And the answer is he gets chenek. Chenek is when it's just one of the four one of the four, um, one of the four capital punishments that we have, right? He gets chenek, but he has a portion of the world to come. But someone who embarrasses his friend in public does not have any portion of the world to come. 
what he that's what he that's what he told he told the people last. Yeah, so you're asking about David. People even in his time were asking about David, did he make a mistake? It turns out, um, and it's it's possible he might have made a mistake, and we see he repented, but he didn't he didn't commit adultery. He didn't technically commit adultery. Right. He, just, he may have made a mistake in judgment, yeah. and we see he did repent, but he never committed adultery, and that's for sure true. And another example, which I thought someone would mention, was the story of, of Reuven, Reuben, right, the oldest son of, the oldest son of Jacob. of Jacob. It says that he slept with Bila, <coughs> which is actually, um, it's it, the Talmud says that he clearly never slept with her, and that's why the preceding uh, uh, verse in the Torah says, "And the sons of Jacob were twelve, i.e., they were all equal, they were all righteous." Uh, rather, what it means is that he rearranged the bed. But the Torah, because the Torah treats righteous people with a very, um, uh, very strictly. So if you're righteous, if you make any slight mistake, we, we automatically magnify that. So that would be another example. But King David, if uh, I don't want to go through the technical details, but technically he didn't commit adultery. He made a mistake in judgment. We see he repented. And like we said, people make mistakes. And even, uh, even today make people make mistakes. And even 50 years ago, people make mistakes. And even 100 years ago, and 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 years ago, people make mistakes. Where We have free will. We have the ability to choose. And sometimes we make mistakes. And that's... And that's something we, you know, which is a fact of life, and you make a mistake, you try to repent. But technically, King David never actually committed adultery. i got a question for you. Um, we're studying a little bit about the Yigdal, and the Ra 